Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Buick Encore GX, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Kurt vehicle wiring harness with a four-way flat trailer connector in. So it seems like people use their Encores to do a little bit of everything, you know, which does include some towing. And that's exactly where this wiring kit's gonna come into play. You know, whenever you're pulling a trailer down the road, you're gonna want the lights to work on it. That way people know what you're doing and you'll be more safe and legal. And using a kit like this is gonna allow those lights to work and they're gonna provide us with not only our turn signals, but our brakes and running lights as well. So one thing to note with this kit, it is not a custom fit, plug and play uh, type deal, but honestly, this works really well. It seems like a lot of those plug and play kits for this particular vehicle uh, has been giving people some issues with them not being pinned correctly and, and some other things like that. You know, there's a few different variants of this vehicle with different type of lights and everything else. And so this kit is a surefire way to know that your trailer wiring is going to work uh, regardless on what type of Encore or tail lights that you have. And honestly, don't be intimidated by it. This is actually really easy to get in place. You know, it's just some quick splice connectors and everything's out in the open and easy to get to. So um, honestly, it was probably just as simple, if not more simple than those plug and type, plug and play type harnesses. So one good thing about this kit, you know, is the fact that it does draw power directly from the battery. So it's gonna be on its own circuit. That way if a short or something, something like that would occur, we're not gonna to have to worry about compromising our Buick's factory wiring and things like that. But other than that, um, you know, we kind of talked about the installation and how it was pretty simple. So as long as you stay focused, really shouldn't give you any issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get going on that now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our Encore and we're gonna to need to remove our taillights. So we'll go ahead and open up our rear hatch. So once we have our rear hatch open, if we come over here to our tail light, we're gonna have some plastic covers. And we're gonna pop those open. I'm gonna use a pick. You can also use a small flathead screwdriver. And that'll expose two T15 types type Torx bit screws underneath. Grab our bit and get these removed. Once we have those out, and then grab our tail light. We're gonna kind of wiggle it around and pull back on it. Then we're gonna to need to disconnect it. So we're gonna have some quarter turn type fasteners. Let's just turn those. And then this one is gonna have a connector in there. Kind of spin it around, we'll get a better better view of it here, hopefully. It's gonna have a connector. You can take that same pick or screwdriver and kind of push down on the center of that connector and pull up. That's gonna release it. So that's what I was talking about there. If you push down on that, there's some give there, and once it has that give, that's when you pull out and that'll release it. So that said, we'll set our tail light off to the side and then repeat the same process to get the other one removed as well. At this point, we can go ahead and test our wiring and I already have done that for you. Um, I just used a test light and ran through all of our signals and this is what I came up with. This wire here, this yellow wire, that's gonna be our uh, turn signal. This green wire, that's going to be our running light signal and this red wire is gonna be our brake light signal. So we're gonna have a three wire uh, type system. So each wire controls uh, our signals independently. And so that's how we're gonna hook it up. And I wanna mention, I did the other side as well and the colors of the wires are the same over there too. So I'll just take a mental note of that. But with that said, now we can go ahead and start to get everything hooked up. We can feed our wires up into the driver's side tail light pocket. So what I've done is just used a fish wire 
This is a piece of tubing. You can use a coat hanger or something like that too. There's quite a bit of space up here. So um, what you're gonna do is take your, your new wiring kit and you're gonna tape the red, white, yellow, and brown wire to the fish wire. And we're gonna simply pull this up into the tail light pocket. That way we can start to get everything hooked up. First thing we're gonna do is secure our white wire here. This is gonna be a ground wire. It's gonna have that pre-attached ring terminal. You wanna secure this to the metal portion of your vehicle. I'm gonna go right here in this spot, it's out of the way. And I'm gonna use a self-tapping screw, which is provided to get this secured. So I went ahead and started to hook up our wires here. So the yellow one is gonna be for the left side turn signal, which happens to be the yellow wire. The red wire, our new red wire, is gonna be the brake light signal, which in our case, the factory red wire uh, happens to be it. So I paired the two together there. And that leaves us with the brown, new brown wire. All right, it's gonna be our tail light signal, which happens to be the factory green one. So these are just quick splices and the way they're gonna work is really simple. You're gonna take the new wire and put that through the quick splice. And this is probably the hardest part trying to keep everything together here. But you're just gonna slide that quick splice over the appropriate wire. Make sure it's in there straight, not in a bind or anything. Then you're just going to take a pair of pliers, I like to use needle nose, and simply squeeze down on that metal tab. And that's going to splice those two wires together. Once that's done, you can simply close up that cap. That's really all there is to it. Now underneath the vehicle, we're here over on the driver's side. This is where our wiring came down. Um, and what I've done is simply just mounted up the converter box, which is this right here. I just used a zip tie to secure it to the body of our vehicle. And we're gonna have our four-way flat wiring as well as a single green wire. And so I simply just routed that above our bumper beam towards the passenger side. So here you can see where the green wire comes and our four-way flat. The four-way flat, I just drop down next to our hitch. And that's where this is gonna end up. The green wire, however, continues to get routed over towards the passenger side. And then I did over here what I did on the driver's side. I dropped down a fish wire and taped our green wire to it. That way we could pull it up into the tail light pocket and get it hooked up to the wiring. So I pulled our green wire up just like we did the other side and connected it using that quick splice. And since this is controlling our right turn signal, I went ahead and connected it to the yellow wire over here on the passenger side. At this point, we can come back under the vehicle and we're gonna have the black wire that's coming off of our converter box. It's gonna be pre-stripped and we wanna crimp on a bug connector. So I'm using a heat shrink type bug connector the ones that come with it are just standard types. Those are gonna work just fine, but if you'd rather upgrade to a heat shrink to help against corrosion, you can always grab them here at each trade But with that one side crimped on, you're then gonna take one end of the bundle of wire that comes with the kit. This end is gonna get connected into that buck connector. So we'll slide that in. Crimp it down. Once we have this crimped, we can come back with the heat source and seal up the ends. And then what we're gonna do with the black uh, wire here is we're gonna route this to the front of our vehicle and the engine compartment. That way we can connect it to a power source. So I went ahead and sealed up the ends of our buck connector and that's how it turned out. And I simply just started a router wiring. All right, so I followed up through here along the brake line 
You want to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. So definitely use some of the zip ties to keep it up and out of the way of those components. The wire drops down along the side of our fuel tank where it swings around here. And then this is us going to follow our uh, factory lines here. So that just continues on and then we can route it on up and the way I got it into the engine compartment is how we got it into the taillight pocket. I used a pull wire, dropped it down, taped the wire to it, went back up and simply pulled it into place. So now in the engine compartment here's where our wiring comes up and what you're going to do is simply connect the included fuse holder to it. So again, a buck connector here, ring terminal on the other end, make sure the fuse is not installed. If we lift up on this cover, that's gonna expose our power supply. And I'm gonna use this stud here. I don't wanna risk undoing anything else with uh, this fuse board and everything else. I think it would just, uh, you know, we can avoid, avoid any potential accidents, so. That said, I'm going to loosen this up with the 10 millimeter socket. Sometimes these don't come off all the way, at least easily, which is the case with this one. If you feel it kind of stop, you know, don't force it. What we're gonna do is take this ring terminal and we're gonna cut an opening in it. That way we can sneak it in underneath the uh, nut there. So I'm gonna cut out a an opening here and what I like to do is cut out that opening and then kind of make that ring terminal a little bit smaller and cut the opening out again that way it just kind of gets a better bite on it and we're just simply going to work this right around that stud underneath the nut. Go ahead and get this tightened back down. And once we have it tight, we can then come back up to our fuse holder take the included fuse and put that in position there. So before we actually put our tail lights back, good idea to test your wiring to make sure that it's working properly. And I'm using this tester, which you can grab here at each trailer as opposed to plug it into my trailer. That way, if the trailer has any issues, we can bypass those, if that makes sense. But with that said, go ahead, try our left turn signal, our right turn signal, our brakes and our running lights. Now that we verified everything worked, we can plug our light back on in. And once we have it back on our vehicle here, we'll be able to get it resecured. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt vehicle wiring harness with the four-way flat trailer connector end on our 2020 Buick Encore GX.